see it. Well, let's turn in our Bibles to Philippians chapter 3 today. Philippians chapter 3 this morning. Every few years, New Year's falls on a Sunday. It's a great day to reflect and plan for the new year. You can literally find thousands of books and articles on how to set goals, and many have helpful advice. For instance, the editorial team of Indeed.com, that's a website that gives career advice. They posted the top 10 New Year's resolutions for those who follow them. Number one was read more, not less, read more. Uh, two, uh, take a break from social media. Three, volunteer, practice gratitude. Five, practice healthy sleep habits. Six, practice good eating and drinking habits. Seven, keep your space organized. Eight, commit to learning, commit to growing. Nine, create a new budget. Ten, improve your time management. Tips for self-improvement. They're good and they're helpful, but you've come to church. We're opening the Bible. What does God say? Does God have anything in the Bible about goals, about New Year's resolutions? My message is entitled, Overcome a Life of Boredom. Set Great Goals for 20. 24. Would you please uh, stand with me as I read from Philippians chapter 3? Here we are challenged to set personal faith goals. Instructions from Paul about setting goals. We'll pick it up, Philippians chapter 3. I'd like to read here in verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I'm not perfect, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May we pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. And I thank you for your people that have gathered on your day in this place to worship you, to love you, to please you, to serve you, to hear from heaven. I pray that we will be challenged from your word of how we can plan and prepare uh, the goals and values for this coming year. May you guide us. May you lead us. If there be one and they're just not certain of where they'll spend eternity when they die, draw them to yourself to receive the ultimate gift of salvation today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The greatest gift that God has given, the greatest gift God has given to you is life. It's life. You exist because God thought of you. In him we live and move and have our being. The greatest gift is life, but especially eternal life. And so in John chapter 10, verse 28, uh, look what Jesus Christ, he says to us, it's there in your notes, and I give unto them, say it with me, eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus could not be more clear. There is life after death. There is life after death. And when you die, your soul and spirit, your consciousness, your personality is going to live on. You are body, soul, and spirit. And just because the body dies doesn't mean that you cease to exist. On Wednesday, on Wednesday when Mary Barth took her last breath here, she opened up her eyes in heaven. She was awake. She was conscious. She was alive. She had a spirit body. She had memory. She is recognizable. And one day, we're going to join her if we're saved there is life after death Jesus said I'm the resurrection and the life not only uh, is there life and this place of eternal existence called heaven the new heaven the new earth Revelation 21 1 but he gives abundant life right now John 10 10 abundant life 
That means that our life right now is full and overflowing with joy and peace and love and goodness. This is what Jesus Christ gives to us. He gives this to us. Because you are alive, there is no reason for you ever to be bored. We did not allow our kids to say, I'm bored. Is that right, Pastor Matt? You're not allowed to say, I'm bored. That's like a curse word in the Wendell household. You can't do that. You see, if you're alive, then you can't be bored. What can you do? You can read a good book. You can enjoy a sunset or a sunrise. You can make a dessert. Better that... Better yet, you can make two desserts and give one to a friend, one to a neighbor, uh, one to a widow. You can listen to an edifying podcast. You can play your favorite Christian song and you can sing out at the top of your lungs. You can get a ministry and make a difference in someone else's life. And today, you can take 30 minutes and make a list of great faith goals for 20 24, and you can begin to accomplish them in the next 100 days. And so the question is setting personal faith goals biblical, and the answer is yes. One of the greatest Christians of all time is the Apostle Paul. I mean, at the at the peak, at the peak of his spiritual maturity. He writes this letter to the Philippian church and to us. Even though he is in prison, he, this is what he says. He says, I am not exactly where God wants me to be. I have so much more room to grow. I haven't reached my goal yet, but I'm determined. I'm determined to leave my old life behind and keep looking forward to that, what God has for me. I am sprinting. I am running. I am pursuing toward the only goal that counts, to cross the finish line, to win the prize, to hear from Jesus. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. My eyes are on the crown, Paul says. My eyes are on the prize. Wow, what a challenge to all of us today. In the new year, we will not be able to control all of the circumstances around us, but we can control the choices, the attitude, the decisions that we make and the way we respond. Now, the Bible says, Planning is a wise thing to do. Is that right? Planning is a wise thing to do. But it also says we need to be humble about our planning. And so in James chapter 4, we have this instruction. Go to now, ye that say today, tomorrow, we'll go into such a city, we'll continue there, we'll buy, we'll sell, we'll get great gain. We're going to prosper. Here is the caution. He says, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord what? Wills. If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. We are to plan, but we need to hold our plans loosely because God can change those plans, can't he? He can change those plans. Uh, Proverbs 6, the Bible says, Go to the ant, thou slugger, consider her ways and be wise. We need to prepare. We need to plan. So I'm going to, to ask you, for you to ask God to help you make a one hundred day plan and to begin to achieve your goals you don't want to stay the way you are do you don't you want to grow don't you want to change and mature begin to ask yourself how can i make my life count how can i make a contribution to god and to others with my life so here we go let's start with this five reasons why we are to set faith goals letter a Goal setting is a spiritual responsibility. It is a spiritual responsibility. Did you know that God the Father sets goals? God the Father has goals for human history. He has goals for the earth, for the world. He has goals for Israel. And God has goals for you and me. The Lord Jesus Christ had many goals, and we have many examples in the Gospels about that. The Apostle Paul, he had goals. He had, he had church planning goals. He had spiritual growth goals, as we see here. He had, he had prayer goals. We have his prayer lists in the epistles. 
And God wants you to have a goal. Verse 14, he says, I have a goal. Now in verse 15, he says, he says, if you are spiritually minded, then you're gonna, you're gonna be like me and you're going to have goals as well for your life and your family. If you do not have goals, if you do not have plans for your life, then, well, you're going to drift. You see, when you set a faith goal, you're saying, God, God, I'm asking you to help me. God, I'm asking for your power to be able to accomplish uh, this goal by a certain time. Maybe you've never read through your Bible. Maybe you've tried but you quit. I mean, a lot of us have, have, have had that experience over the years. I want to read through my Bible. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm your pastor. I'm here to help you. If you are a Christian, a born-again Christian, and you're going to be in heaven, you do not want to go to heaven without having not read the Bible through at least one time. Is that right? I mean, God's love letter. So I'm trying to help you out here. And so the way you're going to do that, you're going to read through your Bible. You say, but pastor, I've tried, and I quit. You know, I quit, you know right, 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 was it 11, Leviticus 13? I mean, you just can't, can't get through that chapter. Or or maybe you make it all the way to Ezekiel, and then you say, you wave the white flag, I surrender, I quit, I just can't do it. But you can, and God can help you. And so for 2024, if you want to read through your Bible and you've never done it, this is what you're going to do. You're going to start in the New Testament, all right? <laughs> so start in the New Testament, and then you can go back to the, uh, back to the Old Testament. Ephesians 3.20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I want to dare you to dream great dreams for your life. Dreams are great. You don't have to have any money to dream. So what's the difference between a goal and a dream? A goal is a dream with a date. If you don't put a deadline on your dream, it's just a dream. But when you give it a date, you make it a goal. Don't expect anything big to happen in your life until you set a faith goal. And so in a few minute, minutes, we're going to talk about your 100-day goals. The most important question about your goal is this. You ask this question, will this goal require me to have faith in God? Will it require me to have faith in God? In your notes, if you can do it in your own power, that's not a faith goal. Another reason to have a faith goal is goals focus my energy. I mean, the world is full of distractions and detours and diversions. Uh, notice what Paul says in verse 13. He says this, one thing I do... And so the secret of effectiveness is focusing and concentration. Paul did not say, these 30 things I dabble in. No, no. He said, this one thing I do, a laser focus. He knew what God wanted him to do, and he stayed after it. Goals focus my energy. Let her see. Goals keep me going. Why well, set goals? They keep me going. Goals give me endurance. They give me perseverance. They make me diligent. Goals give me hope. Goals give you a reason to get out of bed. If you don't have any goals in your life today, you'll probably be tempted to be discouraged tomorrow. Six million Jews lost their lives in the Nazi concentration camps. A research study was done by the University of California that found that the survivors... The survivors of those death camps all had one thing in common. They all had hope. They had something to look forward to. They had a goal. The study is entitled, And the Ones That Survived Had Hope. Resilience in Holocaust Survivors. Those who survived had a goal in their life. A goal keeps you from being discouraged when setbacks come. Can I tell you right now, in 2024, you're going to have some setbacks. I mean, some things are not going to go your way. You're going to make a plan, and it's going to change. You're going to want to do this, and it's not going to happen. There's going to be problems. Setbacks will come in 2024. Everyone has setbacks. I mean, no one goes from success, 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 success. That's just not life. 
And so when the setbacks come, your goals will give you endurance and hope. Your goals will keep you from discouragement when the setbacks come. And so here we go. It's important to set these new goals. If you are discouraged right now, you need to set new goals. Letter D, goals build my character. Goals build my character. Let me share a little secret with you about this. The greatest benefit of faith goals, it's not what you achieve. It's not the accomplishment. It's what you become in the process. Faith goals shape your character. We shape our goals, and then they shape us. You see, while you're working on your goals, God is working on you to develop that which is eternal, and that is your character. It's like uh, for those who go to the gym or they work out at home, and they're exercising day after day, week after week, month after month. What's happening in, in the process of that, they're getting, getting stronger because of that, and that's true of our character. And so in verse 13, look what he says. I keep reaching forth. In verse 14, I keep pressing toward the mark. I keep striving. I don't give up inch by inch. Did you ever think, how did the snail make it into Noah's Ark? All right? <laughs> by perseverance. He didn't quit. And neither should you or I. I will never become what God intends me to be without intention. Do you intend to be any different on December 31st, 2024? Sadly, there, are, there may be some people here today or people watching online, you're not gonna be any different in one year. Not gonna be any different. Why? Because they're not, they're not intending to grow or to change. They won't take the time to set and pursue faith goals. 365, no, 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 it's leap year. 366 days in the coming year. Are you gonna be any different? Are you gonna change? Are you gonna grow? Are you gonna mature? You get to choose. Why should we have goals? One more reason, and that is good goals will be rewarded. I want you to get those rewards. I don't want you to miss out on the rewards that God has for you. As your pastor, I love you. I want you to be rewarded. Now, here are two ways God says that we are rewarded. First, we are rewarded by people here on earth. And secondly, we'll be rewarded by God in heaven. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And Jesus said, if you give even the smallest cup of cold water in my name, I will reward you in eternity. And so, are you convinced? God wants you to plan. He wants you to make goals. So how do we do it? Number two, how to choose your faith goals. Letter A, look back before you look forward. Find out where you are. And Paul did that. He did it in verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. He gave us his Jewish history, his pedigree, how he was a Jewish leader. Before we look forward, we need to know where we are. We need to stop and look back. Every year is a series of hills and valleys, highs and lows. Every January, we, will, we look forward to the new year and what we would like to do. But then as the months roll by, we begin rushing through the activities and we can get lost in the weeds and forget those goals and dreams that we had. And so December 31st today is like a hilltop where we stop and look back at the path we have taken. It's like climbing up on one of those corn maze towers. Now, how many of you have been through a corn maze before? How many of you like them? How many don't like the corn mazes? How many have never been in a corn maze? Oh, you're in Pennsylvania. You can Make it a goal to go to a corn maze in 2024. And when you're in there, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes like, where am I? And so if you climb the tower, you can look around, you can see where you started and how you got from the beginning to this place and where you need to go and how to get to the, uh, the exit, how to be successful. We need to do that as we make our goals. Maybe in 2023, you, you ignored God you ignored his word, and you ended up 
and some of those dead ends. Isn't that frustrating? You can fix that today. You can fix that today because God's word is like climbing the tower. You look back and you look forward. Secondly, evaluate your responsibilities. Write out the answer to this question. What are your main responsibilities in life? Not your top desires, but your responsibilities. Godly people are way more concerned about their responsibilities than their desires. And so what is your responsibility as a Christian, a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a friend, a student, an employee, and employer? Forget anything? Like a ministry responsibility. So how do we make these goals? Let her see. Take a realistic look at yourself and not others. Take a look at you and not anyone else right now. You're not going to have a good view on your life if you're constantly thinking about what bad things happen to you. Instead, think about what you have done with what you have. So don't choose the victim mentality. It'll discourage you. It'll destroy you. And so seven times in Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus, he says about us, he says, we are what? We are overcomers. We're not victims. We are overcomers. And we need to live out uh, that joy and that victory that he has given to us. If the focus of your life is looking back at hurts, if the focus is blaming others, it's time to spiritually grow up and forgive. Focus on fulfilling the calling that God has for your life today and beyond. Now, this is where verse 13 comes in. Forgetting those things which are behind. Think about the Apostle Paul. Think about what he did before he became a Christian. He thought in the name of God, these Christians were against Jehovah God. And so he got papers from the high priest. He arrested them. He tortured them. He put them to death. And you know, if he thought about what he did in his old life, that would discourage him. He would go into to despair and despondency. He says, forgetting the things which are behind, I am reaching forth unto the things which are before. Take a realistic look at yourself, not others. How to choose faith goals. Here's one letter D. Consider specific areas to make goals. Let me give you three. Godliness, relationships, responsibilities. Godliness is to be our top priority as believers. If making more money, if buying more toys, if promoting yourself is your top priority, then you need to fix that in 2024. I'd like you to listen closely to what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33. I mean, the greatest preacher who ever lived, greatest sermon ever given, Matthew 6, 33, what does he say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Is it a serious priority for you to have a godly life? I think Jesus really meant it. Secondly, evaluate your relationships. Family, friends, coworkers, ask, am I doing my part in this relationship? Three responsibilities. Am I pleasing God by how well I'm fulfilling my responsibilities? Letter E, letter E, go higher. Go higher. Set your goals high enough to stretch you. Let your goals come from your responsibilities, not your desires. You know, the world says, the world says, well, I'm, I'm going to lose weight in the new year. I'm going to work out. Why? What's the motivation? Well, so I can look more attractive, so I can feel good about myself. Wrong motivation. How about, how about a right motivation? How about you go and exercise so you can serve the Lord better? How about you take care of yourself so that you can take care of the people around you so they don't have to take care of you prematurely? Uh, how about so you have a better energy level to give to your spouse and your family and your church family and friends? Begin to honor God at work and your business, not just to make more money, but to use your skills, your gifts, and work and business for God's glory to advance his kingdom. 
set higher goals for selfless reasons. Now, two temptations to avoid on page four, setting goals too low and attempting to accomplish them too quickly. Set your goal a little bit out of your reach. I can walk you all over this campus and show you that every major building program we've ever done as a church was just a little bit out of our reach. We really needed God's help. You know, the first building we uh, built was the, uh, uh, what's now the chapel and where the restroom wing is there. We've been five and a half years in the Upper Mary Middle School, and, and uh, we started out, it was $800 a month to rent the rooms, and as we added a couple of rooms, we're up to $1,300 a month of rent. And then we build this little building, and our mortgage is $400,000, and it's $4,000 a month. In the middle school, we had no utilities, we had no insurance, and now, now, now we have this, this building. That's, that's three and a half times higher than what we had. It was a stretch, but God provided. And as we grew, we went into double services, and then we built this building. We moved in here in November 1996, and as the builder, the contractor came and presented us with the UNO uh, to occupy, he also presented us with, a, uh, with an overrun, and that overrun was $125,000, and we didn't have that money. We didn't have that much. Most of those were because the township said, well, you need this. The township said, you need this, and you need this, you need a pipe here. And, and so we had a $125,000 bill plus the mortgage, and we had no money for it. And I took that, and I took it up into my office, and I, I put it down on the floor, and I thought about Hezekiah. When he got the news that Sennacherib said, uh, surrender or die. And so 185,000 soldiers surrounded Jerusalem. He put that letter down. He got on his knees and he prayed to God, God, we're doing your will, your way, deliver us. And they woke up the next day and they were all dead. They were all dead. One angel, the angel of the Lord, had taken out that army. And, and you, you know, it's, it's uh, verified by history. Snacherib in the prism, it says, I surrounded Jerusalem and King Hezekiah like a bird in a cage, but he didn't take the city. And so I put that down, I prayed, and God provided for us a no interest loan, and in six months we paid off that overrun. Stretching, set the goal a little higher. Letter F, take practical steps. If your goal is to be a better husband, is that a good goal? To be a better wife, is that a good goal? Yes. Well, that's a good goal. Yes, it is. But it's a little bit vague. If you're going to make that happen, how? Well, will you set up a regular date night uh, or lunch with your spouse? And it might be once a week. It might be once every two weeks. It might be once every three weeks. Once every four weeks, too, 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 too much, all right? <laughs> Got to get it back, at least every two or three weeks. And, and if you decide, I want to be a better husband, I want to be a better wife, then you decide today, I'm never going to yell at my spouse again unless the house is on fire. You decide today, I'm not going to yell at my spouse again unless the house is on fire. Well, you decide to stop name-calling and using sarcasm and cursing. I'm talking practical steps. If you're, if you're a young person, you decide, I'm not going to talk back to my parents anymore. No matter how frustrated I get, no matter how wrong they are, I'm going to hold my tongue and I'm going to honor God. You decide today. You decide today. That's the practical step you're going to take. Specific details. I won't slam the doors anymore. As an employee, I'm not going to be on social media while I'm at work. Uh, let me tell you how to be in the top 5% uh, it, where you work, to be in the top 5% of effectiveness and success. And that is... Well, show up, right? <laughs> show up on time, and don't be on social media, and you just, you just skyrocketed to the top 5% of your employee workforce. Be a better employee because you're serving the Lord Christ. 
Number three, write your goals for the next 100 days. Write them down. You know how long 100 days is? It's 14 weeks plus two days. 14 weeks plus two days. 100 days from now is April the 9th. The next 100 days is the, your easiest season to get a head start on your goals and make new good habits. Why? Why is it the easiest season? Because we have no yard work. We have no yard work. That's why I personally don't live in Florida. Who wants to mow the grass 52 weeks a year? <laughs> now me. Now you snowbirds, you're probably renting so you don't have to mow it. Uh, but it's the easy, it gets darker earlier. You have more time at home. This is the easiest season. It's 10 sets of 10 days. No excuses. You write it down, no excuses. Today, take some time to get alone and just be quiet before the Lord and consider these two questions. Letter A, what is the most important personal goal I'd like to accomplish in the next 100 days with God's help. If you have no goal, then by default, you're going to drift. What is the one thing that I want God to work on me and develop? Now, I've, I've got, uh, we have five children. Two are married that live here. We have three that are single that live, uh, live out of the area. And uh, one of them uh, is on this uh, New Year's uh, goal uh, assignment and workbook and 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 the question was this the question was this and and they asked me go to a trusted friend or relative and ask them what do I what is my weakness what do I need to work on in 2024 now that takes some humility to to be able to ask that question of someone else what is the most important personal goal you'd like to accomplish? If you need some help on that, ask a friend, ask a relative. Second question, what is the most important ministry goal I'd like to accomplish in the next 100 days with God's help? What is ministry? It's helping somebody else. I, I don't just want to have a self-centered goal. I want to have a goal to help somebody else. Anytime you help anybody in the name of Jesus, that's called ministry. We're called to ministry. We're not here on this earth just to help ourselves. God put us here to help other people. Do you have a, do you have a ministry? You say, oh, but Pastor, you know, I, 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 I don't. I, I actually filled out a card one time, but nobody contacted me, so I guess I don't, I'm not needed. No, 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 no. Well, nobody asked me. Okay, I'm asking you today. I'm asking you today. You say, I don't know what to do. Well, just cross the hallway, and there's a nursery in there, and talk to Andrea Johnson. Leave her a note and say, hey, uh, I, I want to help out. Or see Pastor Anthony. I want to help out with the kids. Or Brother Dan, I want to sing in the choir. Uh, uh, Brother Lou, you, I want to work on outreach. Whatever you want to do, God will have a place for you to do it, but you have to make the step forward. So write down your goals, not for the rest of your life, just the next 100 days, 10 days for 10 times. Then share your 100-day goals with a family member or a trusted friend. Encourage others as we work and strive together for Christ. How do we do this? How can you accomplish your spiritual goals for 2024? God has given you his word. God has given you his spirit. God has given you his people to help and encourage you. Iron sharpens iron. We're to edify one another. We're to help one another. Turn over a page. Chapter 4, verse 13. Look what he says. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now clearly that's in the will of God. I can do all things through Christ. There in your notes. God's power is literally only available to those who receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you want God's help, you need to know God. If you're tired of living life apart from God, if you're tired of living life apart from God's power, today you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. How do you do that? You call on the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13. 
Now, if you would take out that second handout I gave to you today, my personal goals for 2024. If you don't have it, you can go to scottwendell.com. It's been posted there. You can copy it. You can pr print it out. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Four areas to set goals. Spiritual, family, personal, career. I'm making it as easy as possible for you to add to it. I'll be faithful to God and uh, uh, to maintain a God night time. Choose a Bible plan. Maybe it's to read through the Bible. Maybe you've done that a few times. Maybe it's, well, I'm going to read through my New Testament. Maybe you're going to read the New Testament four times. You seek to be a witness daily. You seek to discover your gifts and abilities to serve God faithfully. We'll talk about, about that in the new year. I'll give tithes and offerings to the Lord. You write down a spiritual goal for yourself. It might be some sin or bad habit you want to conquer. You write it down there with God's help. You will say, you know, I'm going to be in God's house every Sunday celebrating that Jesus Christ is alive from the dead he rose on a Sunday he commands us to gather together to worship him on a Sunday unless you're out of town and unless you're sick make it your goal to be in God's house now if you're sick please stay home did I get an amen on that Amen. If you're sick, stay home. But if you're not sick and you're not out of town, we gather together to worship Jesus and we praise God that he is alive. This is a greater event than the creation of the world. Corporate worship moved from Saturday, the Sabbath, to Sunday as we celebrate he is alive. Family goals, personal goals. I will lose blank number of pounds by blank I will exercise so many times a week I'll read Christian books now I've been transparent with you I've been transparent with you the last two years we got to this place I told you that I needed to lose some weight and that was my goal and I lost the weight and then I found it and then <laughs> that I lost it again and I uh, I want you to know that that uh, uh, this year's a good one all right so uh, all right, uh, personal goals, career goals. You get alone with God, you ask God, and then you listen. You listen. You let the Spirit of God prompt you and guide you. You can overcome a life of boredom because you have great spiritual goals for 2024. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time in your house and in your word, thank you for the power of the word of God, the practicality to help us in our daily lives. Your scripture, your truth is so wonderful. It is the living water. It is the bread of life. Our heads are bowed as we come into God's presence. I want to ask you this question. If you died today, do you know for certain that when it's your turn to step out of this life, that you will enter God's presence because you have been saved you are born again. You made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not asking you if, you if you do sacraments, if you go to church, if you're sincere. I'm not asking if you've been baptized. I'm asking, are you saved? Do you have a living relationship with the living God? Do you have assurance that heaven's your home? If that is your testimony, would you raise your hand all over our congregation today? Yes, pastor, I've been saved. You may put your hands down. You say, pastor, I, I think I'm saved. I, I hope I'm saved. But I have doubt. I'm not sure. Maybe you just raised your hand, but in your heart of hearts, you have doubt. God brought you here today to hear the good news that salvation is a gift, not found in baptism. You say, but pastor, I, I, I do the best I can. I keep the Ten Commandments. I go to church. I give money. I help others. Good works are good, but they do not wash away sin. Only Jesus can wash away sin. And that's why the angel announced at his birth, for unto you is born this day a Savior, and he shall save his people 
from their sin. And so today, if you sense the Spirit of God tugging at your heart, say yes. Say yes. Believe that Jesus is God's Son. Believe that He died for you. Believe that He rose again and receive the gift. You ask, how do I receive that gift? The Bible says it's by faith. It's a choice. It's a commitment. It's a choice to believe that Jesus loves you, that he died for you. This is not a process. This doesn't happen over a period of months or years. It's a moment in time where you turn to him and receive him. If you'd like to do that today, you can. You can call on the name of the Lord. You say, what do I pray? Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Would you pray with me now? If that's you, I'm not asking you to get baptized or join the church. I'm asking you to take a step to Christ, to receive him as your own. Pray with me now. Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for me and rose again. Please come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. I turn from sin to Christ. Please save me today heads about our eyes are closed as we show respect to our neighbor if you just pray with me if you just made that commitment to believe to receive Christ I want to say to you welcome to the family of God the greatest decision of your life you just made it and I want to pray for you now I want to pray for you to have the assurance and peace that Christ is with you, heaven is your home. The Bible says his spirit, his Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons and daughters of God. May, may I pray for you? If you just prayed, if you just called upon the Lord, would you simply raise your hand? Would you hold it up high for just a moment? I want to pray for you. Anyone at all, just lift it up high for a moment. Pastor, I pray with you, and I meant it from my heart. God bless you. Anyone else, I just pray with you and I meant it. God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Now, Father, I pray for these that have opened their heart to you. I pray that they will sense and claim your promise of assurance in their life to know they belong to you. Now, during this invitation hymn, I ask that your people will come humbly to you seeking you to lead and guide and make plans spiritual faith goals for the new year being led by your word and by your spirit thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee Father, thank you for your goodness and grace to us. Thank you. You've not left us alone. You've given us your word. You've given us your spirit. You've given us your people. Now I pray as we give this old year back to you and we receive the new year that we will receive it with gratitude, humbly seeking your guidance and leadership and power to make a difference for Christ to advance the kingdom of God, to lead people to you to help Christians to grow. Help us to be quick to forgive the offenses. Help us to be quick to help those in need. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.